Look at this ridiculous letter from the other alleged assailant in the room. And it's, it's equally ridiculous yesterday's fig leaf, I guess you'd call it, where the same statement is repeated just this time with his signature on it. And ask yourself, do you think investigator Kavanaugh would have tolerated letters like this from the third person in the room had there been one with Mr. Clinton and Ms. Lewinsky? Never in a million years. And yet this is what we're supposed to satisfy ourselves with in this matter. It is preposterous to anyone who's ever done serious investigation. Yet this is what we are left with. We have done a botch of an investigation. Over time, I expect the facts come out. They have a way of doing that. Cover-ups never last. The sand is running through Kavanaugh's hourglass. And I pledge whatever I can do to make sure that the truth of his conduct is ultimately determined. Setting aside this botch, we go back to a Supreme Court far too often dancing to the tune of a handful of big Republican special interests. Big Republican special interests funding the Federalist Society that is now picking Supreme Court nominees. Big Republican special interests using the unlimited dark money power the Supreme Court gave them to mount TV ad campaigns for Supreme Court nominees. Big Republican special interests funding frequent flyer Emmy key, so-called friends of the court, offering constant instruction and encouragement to the five Republicans on the Supreme Court, and big Republican special interests on the winning side of those 70 five to four partisan victories, the fruits of their political labor. People are catching on. The record of this is undeniable. And as I said, it will be a disaster for the court. I yield my time.